and welcome as it is the uh, fourth day of March 2020. My name is Derek and this is the Money Charts channel where all bets, trades, and of the like, well, that's within each his own risk and their own reward. Hello and welcome. So then, I'm going to first talk about uh, James Rolfe, who is a, definitely a major innovator in this world for sure, especially amongst uh, video content. Or a pioneer might be well before his time, better verbiage to use. Cinemassacre doing these videos and... Well, he started doing these videos even before YouTube was even out. And he has done fantastic. Not only that, but he even made a full movie. Uh, he's just a fantastic uh, creator. And one of the shows he used to do that he uh, doesn't do anymore is... Do you know what's bullshit? Well, this is bullshit. And well, no, this is bullshit here. Literally. Uh, I am just fascinated within this actual coin. It's been out for quite some time now. We can see it's been in since, I can see August of last year. And well, it was, went down. And then and then start of the year, this thing went from 468 up to 3,500. If you already thought that these old coins, volatility and all these uh, big, big moves we're already uh, huge as it is. Well, that, this just adds extra fuel to the fire. The volatility on this uh, could be something of a very interesting situation. Again, we're seeing something go from like 500, like an ETF style fund. Almost every single day up from January 26th, completing on February the 15th. Like well, this red candle, this red candle, and then... The opportunities, of course, amongst the day trading situation. And just if you're even active during periods like this. Uh, what, did the, what, what happened so special during these two periods? Well, the high was a th little over 1,000, 1060. And the following period low was 988. So the differential is 60 plus like 12. That's like... Uh, Almost 100, not quite, yeah. So 60, that's 60 points plus another 70 something, 70 points. 70 points out of that, it's like five, 6% and like a half hour time sprain, just time span, not sprain. Just picking away at these moves. And then if you're just doing the buy low, sell high, you know, all these sell orders hitting here from, if you're up at that time and doing it, or even if you're not, I mean, you can just have it automatically done. And well, this is a good example too, but both examples. One, if you're there making trades, oh, sell order hits, you have all, maybe you had four of them hit. Okay, I'm gonna, and then here, okay, I'm gonna place a buy order here. Here, I'm gonna place a buy order here. And you see how they'd all be hitting. This goes here, this goes here, and, and they all hit. Or maybe you go to bed at, say, uh, uh, well, let's say you go to bed here. And at this stage, maybe you have a buy order here, 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 and here. You have your sell order here, here, and here. And then you wake up, say, at nine o'clock in the morning, we'll say you wake up here. And you would have noticed you would have had two trades then you would maybe had a trade at the top you would have to buy here oh, okay sweet so you can make the best and then you just keep on uh going at it or something like that but the the amount of movements and, and price uh, fluctuations that can uh come into play is just huge and look at like this move in here uh starting february 26th at five in the morning and then hitting this low here at 12 30 so for the f for, for the uh, base part of that day, you go from a 950 up to 1220. That move in itself, from this medium standpoint to the higher end, is noticeably greater than 20%. And the volatility, I calculate volatility high, the differential of a move divided by the low. So here, from like 1200 low change to seven and three fifths area, well, that takes us, if I take a thousand minus that number, that's like 340. So then I add another 200 and change. That's like 560 or so. Oh, 560 divided by 750. Oh, okay. Well, what's well, 370 or so is 50. We're talking about 75% volatility in a time span of a morning and into the early afternoon. And that's the portion of several days. So th this here is that percent. And along the way, it has undercut those lows twice. It is not quite meet, re reach those highs, but even still. 750, that's a difference of 250. Add another 30, that's like 280. So 75 is 10%. 150 is 20. 
and then another 75 would be 30 percent and you're just doing this over a few days and then we look at a move from here to here this is going from 1800 to 746 just wild 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 fluctuations and then again this high is even significant lower than this one in here so I'll just just because I know that I'm gonna put a line in here just actually that's not gonna do me any good but I'll just have to remember like 750 and so on let's just scroll this back even further and we can see if you're just doing all these types of tradings where if you're swing trading, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see if this would actually be a long-term winner due to the strategy in the long term. Uh, pending, of course, that we'll just say shit coins keep on doing good. And okay, you'd have a whole shitload of cells that come in. Question is, during a run of this type of magnitude, how much of it would you be able to get intra-move buybacks? Meaning, you're selling along the way, you have your orders hit, ready to go. And, and we're seeing some of these intramove retracements up to this side, because all these cells that you fill just would have obviously been bought and back during these runs lower. That's, uh, that's the patience part of this buy low, sell high type of game. And, and in this vout, we can, or nature, we can take a look here. Well, this good one here had 3,000 and we have pulled back down to 20, under 2,500. So there's a spot where you're playing volatility of a five into 25, that's 20%, and it's okay. It actually isn't anything magnificent. This is a spot where if you're looking to, most of the time when your sellers are hitting, you're not gonna be hitting these lows. Maybe you might hit this one, depending of course on your volatility. If you have like 80, 90, 100 sells that hill and hitting this pot, maybe you might have six or seven buys during these uh, retracement periods as it goes lower, but how are you expecting to, buy at this even if you sell at the exact top on their way up it just probably shouldn't happen and in this volatility that's 1900 barely over that's 1763 so there's still an okay amount of volatility in this baby ass hardly move of anything at all uh, 140 points okay we're seven eight percent and i'm like laughing at that like that's shit ass nothing volatility but it is that compared to of course the normal field and let's uh Continue on further before this. What do we see? I mean, this move is even continuing further. Like I say, this was from that previous low. So this went from this number all the way up to the top, back down again. Uh, this correction here goes from 830 down to 760. So that's like 30, 60. Again, just not even quite 10%. But everything sold in here on the primary point. You can start buying back on this move. If you bought it, say 800, this thing managed to go up to 900. So was 12% volatility you're making? If it was, probably because you got a trade. If not, no. And then continuing on again. And then then what? Then I'm even thinking just picking away at like in this case, small like eight, nine, 12 percent moves. Because I normally be saying that picking away at small like three, four percent moves. But again, this has got crazy volatility along the way. Uh, so it's an interesting, interesting aspect, but these are all, these are good vehicle tools. You're like, oh my goodness, I'm so confident things are going, going to go up. And all it is, is just you buy, you wait when, then if you're right, you're just going to see it go up. And then, then you just start using profit take management mechanisms to your game plan. How are you going to ensure your best profits based on how things are going at that time? Now within these coins, again, they are designed to get their asses destroyed long term and you know what you might think it's bullshit and it sort of is and it will be but right now it's bear shit as we've seen the bear shit's coin go and this is a new chart the, the, the it's coin go from thirteen thousand nine to 1000 so it's lost like 13 14 times its value on its move and just in this little uh well bear market rally i guess we'll literally call that the bear market i mean the bears are the winning so it's a, a, really a bull market whatever the, the bears rallying whatever 1064 low high 2971 that's almost but not but maybe around 3x 
3,000 has come down the 18 lows. It's taken a move of losing over one third's value to do such. So the question would be, if you could buy low, sell high, it, I got to think the question would be, oh, first I got to say what situation, are you up or down? So I think the answer is no, you'd be down. Meaning you're just going in here, you're buying low, selling high, you're just, this thing goes up to 20,000, you buy it back down in here, you sell some more up here. And, and when you say if you started, well, depending on where you started, if you started, say here at 6,000, you probably could be up. Because what's going to happen with this is just buying and just waiting for your orders to fill. When you're here, when you get to this point in your portfolio right here, you should be profiting. You should not be entering negative and, and break even in negative territory until somewhere into here. But that also means too that wherever your portfolio was at this stage on these days, just trading these two crosses against each other, that when you get to this point here, your portfolio is greater than value. It should be as much as it was here as it probably was somewhere in here, which would have meant that it might have been somewhere here as it was there. So you would have to get maybe to here just to get to break even. So you might be minorly down right now. And, and that, that would be dependent, of course, on how the results go. But when you see you're able to, let's say, buy at 85 and sell it in these areas here and just pick away at these things like that, the potential uh, can be very, very big. So this is the whole bull shit and bear shit. Well, bull fund. So you got bull Ethereum. You got bull Litecoin. Maybe you have bull high caps or whatever. You got bull shit coins or bullshit and bear shit type thing. Uh, I think it's interestingly named to uh, put it to perspective. But the opportunities on these to uh, have good caches is definitely there. Now, when using measures to try to determine how uh, how long, uh, how this could be profitable, how you can just even go through stats. One measure of doing such is first, and then you can do this on Crypto Compare. One thing you could do is download the entire history of this fund. The open, the high, the low, and the close. And then in such, what you can do is you could see if you were on a day-by-day -day basis, put in orders and then how would, uh, and then within your spreadsheet, you could just see mathematically, is it in fact a profitable play to try to swing trade back and forth as much as this? And I'm, I'm saying on a consistent basis because it's completely bear shit when it just always goes down like this in the long term. Because in a year from now, I don't know how these things are going to be priced. I don't know if they're going to, I mean, they usually adjust the prices when they keep going down. I'm just going to see if the Canadian ones are still up that I used to trade back in the day. I know the financial ones were the ones that I had the fun with. So they're the ones that I did the most on it. Let's just go to stock. Uh, this one here, the beta pro. There were Horizons beta pro, two times ETF. So two times or even, I mean, three times or more, more volatile. So the volatility is what destroys these things. So in the crypto space, one, this is three, that's three times compared to this 2x. And then it's the crypto volatility, which is already kick-ass supreme as it is anyway. But this thing, this is the uh, this is the one that's down. So obviously the market's getting way, the market's so high. I mean, lately we've had the markets uh, going down. So this is going up. This fund has went from 368 up to 455. That's like nothing really. But you know, I'm I'm just so used to crypto volatility, and I'm just so now showing the bullshit and bear shit funds that are uh, just so interesting to say the least. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at this on the monthly chart. Oh yeah, this is this is bear shit that it does this. Uh, 200 down to three. And that's just how these days. I mean, how are you, you're just going to lose if you just try to buy and sell this back and forth. That's just no way. And then the question is, if you started back in here, um, then it was just... So for me, I was back in this in 2008. So let's see if we still got data back in here. And the prices were like 20 bucks back then. It was a $20 code. I remember that one. This was my favorite one back then, because was it was a bear market too. Uh, and June, yeah, well, my big sell day was October the 10th. That was my big sell day. No, that can't be right. 
No, 2008. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this is 2007. Ah, I mean, I'm looking at that chart. It's like so off. Yeah. I mean, this was, yeah, this is a volatility. This was a $24 back in here. And then all of these wild swings in October 10th. And on the open is when I sold. So this day here, this was the fun day here. And then I guess it went higher. But you know what? That's, the, the, I mean, picking away at these moves, you can see, oh, look how much you would profit. So the question is, if you just keep on going at this, selling at 130, buying at 100, uh, let's assume that with rake, you can survive the rake game well enough. And then you just go through all of this downward movement. It's an interesting aspect. So let's just I'm gonna fast forward this and go to the a bull one. And the markets have been up since 2007, 2000. So this should also be up. But we see how in 2016, this was 18 all the way up to 48. And on the monthly chart, it actually is gotten past those highs. And the volatility that I had here going from 21, and that number was much higher back then too, but or maybe it might have been. Well, they did have a few splits, I think, and then they just have, wouldn't have made a split in a long time because I don't think the low would have been three. It might have been like 10 or something because, or six because they would have split it. In, like, they would have split it, I think, back then. I can't remember. Anyway, it went from three from the high of 20, three up to 48. And that's just what these wild things offer. So for this, if you're looking at this as a day trader today's session, which would have been, uh, these things don't trade too often at all, do they? I mean, what this shows when I put this on the one minute time frame, when you read charts like this and you see these lines, well, what this means is, well, first of all, notice the time on each one. So I'll just take a random spot, this one here. This is 1054. That means it didn't trade until 1118 which meant there was not a single or buyer. The next was a seller that came in at that time frame. And it was a span of uh, well, six minutes plus another 18, which is 24. We don't know how many trades there was. There might have been one. There might have been two or more. Because on this, we have it open at this price and it gapped down. It probably was just one trade. And this person would have had to take at least two orders to, to uh, make this execute. The high 41.36, the low 41.30, and that being the close, so that someone would have sold it down to 41.36. Then they would have uh, done it. Now it could also, now it would have been a sell. Yeah, I was gonna say also could have been a buy, but no, it wouldn't have been. So someone would have uh, sold it down, and that would have been 11.18, and then we wait to 11.33. So the volatility on these markets is pretty tame. Uh, to say the least, but this is the this is like just one of those ETFs, and it's like whatever one. Although we're in volatile market conditions, so I should keep that in mind as well. But anyway, I've been rambling on so much about this. These are all about these uh, all not nothing more than trading vehicles. And when we take a look at uh, these funds, this is what I'm. I, I don't even know if I'm going to be doing any of this or not. I really don't. Um, because I mean, look at the one minute time frame here. It's oh my goodness, what the heck is going on here? Can I pick away at these moves? I mean, this is one minute time frame. What the fuck's going on? Oh, sorry, but I mean, whatever. I'm just as wow, this is I've never seen this before. What kind of volatility are we talking here? We're talking 63, 6, 6 point, 7 points. That's point seven. Oh my goodness, what's the trading fees there? I'm really thinking to myself here at this point. How long is this? this I got to emphasize this. I got one point that I want to make, which is when I try a new exchange, the steps that I do first after creating an account, doing all that stuff, is I'll make a very minimal deposit. And then I'll make a trade, just play around, just, just, just whatever. It doesn't matter what I trade. But I'm going to trade something that I want to withdraw. That's what does matter. So I'll buy something that I want to withdraw. I'll withdraw it. If everything passes the test, then maybe I'll consider using the exchange. And it's probably a decent chance that I will. It's FTX. FT, just do a search for it. It's 
all these up and down moves here. That's the, the, the one minute time frame. Can, I mean, can you literally day trade this and just pick away at dozens and dozens and dozens of trades? 10.23 to 10.12, 1%, not really. I don't know what their rake is either, how much they take of a, of a fee. But I suppose what's going on here in the one minute time frame is, yeah, I mean, it's not going on here. Everything's relatively standard. So it's just, yeah, not, this is all normal here. I mean, you get the odd one like this. That, that, that's normal. Yeah, that, that's not a consistent thing. But if you could take advantage of all anything that just, where you get a lot of volume, a lot of, then that's, that's just fantastic. And here's a spot where just nothing was going on for a while. I don't know why people were sleeping here or something. I don't know. This seems, when you see markets on the one minute time frame, they usually don't look like this, but when there's candles like this, then it's gonna trade multiple times. So if I go to say Ethereum, US dollar T against against the US dollar T on Binance, there's going to be a lot of trades on it. I would have to think so. If I go to it and I check out the one minute time frame, I can see well, there's a, every time it moves, it's it's trading. So 22, 20, there we go. There's a, someone who bought to 16 cents and then someone buys to 18 cents. Uh, no, no trades, no trade. There we go. We have a seller to 17. Buyer at 18, seller to 7. And you don't know if that's a buyer or seller because it's just that they, either way, there's just somebody making a trade in some of them. And uh, usually when it goes up, it's a buyer, but not always is though, based on where the bid and ask lie. But in markets like this, it would be. And then I guess over in the traditional market, I got to think, A, I know they're not mark moving live by any means, but I can still take a look at the one minute and most likely you're going to see definitely good candles and you do. I don't trade these markets. However, I want to get into trading stocks, but but my mindset, it's interesting because I'm about uh, oh, four months away from my 20 year anniversary of my first ever online balance of currency management. And every single year since the year 2000, I have managed online accounts, whether it be sports betting, online poker, cryptocurrencies, daily fantasy accounts. I've done it. I can't say I've done it all, but I've done those ones. And I'm doing two of them right now, of course, in daily fantasy and cryptocurrencies. And I do have a sports bet going on right now, but it's, and it's funny because I just deposited cryptos, make the bet. It's more of a hedge bet. And I think a decent value bet more than anything it's losing right now. But it's been 20 years. So I've been doing this betting. And it's always been a company like, oh, you got like the DraftKings, which does daily fantasies. There was a poker stars that would do poker sites. And then you'd have all the intertops that would have a sports betting site. You deposit funds. They hold them. And then you make your bets. You do your stuff on the accounts that people do. And then you uh, withdraw when you need to. And, and, and they always hold the money. And now with private keys, I, I can still do those things on those same types of sites because one of those sites was also uh, like a water trade or water house or the TD trading site. And then that was one where the bank held the funds. Well, Binance is pretty much the same sort of deal with the E-Trades, all those trading sites, particularly like Binance and Bittrex and Poloniex. And this other site that I was showing you about with the uh, the bullshit and bear shit coins, ITX or something like that. I, f I forget. Literally, that's I think it is ITX. But anyway, they this is where I can hold my money in private keys now, and I can just move funds in and out. I've talked about ratio trading, where oh I need to sell one coin for another, and I got nothing on Binance, and I just need to sell Tezos or Bitcoin Cash or Litecoin or or whatever it might m might have you. Okay, well, how many do I want to sell? You figure that out. You take those coins from your wallet. You send them to your uh, public key uh, deposit address on, say, Binance. Send them off. Okay, they, they arrive. You sell it on the market. You buy the coin you're looking for. You withdraw that to your private key. Your Binance balance is nothing. And that can be done now. So for me to own stocks, um, 
I want them, but I kind of want them also where I have my private key holding them. And I don't have no site where I'm forced to get into it. Maybe it's worth doing in a possibility, but no, I do not see me buying any type of stock anytime soon. Thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.